Hello everyone, welcome to section 10.8, Power Theorems. I'm Miss Lindsay. Uh, our first power theorem that we're going to go over today is chord-chord. As you can see, we have two chords over here in the circle. They are split up into parts. We have one chord is split up in parts A and B. The second one is split up into C and D. To actually solve this, we would take part times part, part of one chord, so that's broken into two parts, equals part times part of the second chord. So if I go ahead and just put an example on here, if I let A equal 3, I'll let C equal 2, B equal 6, let's go ahead and find D. So again, the chord is broken up into two parts, so our first chord would be A times B, so part times part, 3 times 6 equals part times part of the remaining chord, 2 times D. So solving that would give us D equal to 9. Our next power theorem is a secant secant. On this one, as you can see, A and C are the external parts of the two secants, while B and D are the entire or the whole secant. How we would solve this is we would take the external or the outer part, so we would take A times B, the outer times the whole secant, equals the outer times the whole. So again, let's go ahead and label a couple of these. We'll say A is 2. And then I'm going to label the chord part, or the internal part of the secant, as X. Let's call C 3. And the internal part, or the chord part of the secant, is 5. So again, we want to do the outer times the whole. So in our first case here, it would be 2 times the entire secant. So that would be 2 plus x equals the outer part of the second secant, 3, times the whole secant, which in our case here would be adding the 3 and the 5. So if we go ahead and solve, we'll distribute through. And let me go ahead and erase that. So we'll get 2x equals 20. So x equals 10. Okay, um, and yes, we were looking for find x. That's fine. So that's an example of a secant secant. The last power theorem is an example of a tangent secant. So in this case, we have a tangent, A. And again, our secant is labeled just as in the previous theorem. The outer part is B, and the entire secant is C. So in this case, we'd have tangent squared equals outer times whole. So let's go ahead and label. Um, we'll label B as 3. And again, the inner part of the secant or the chord is 5. Let's go ahead and find A in this case. So we'd have tangent squared. So in other words, A squared equals the outer times the whole part. So if we square, if we square root both sides, we get a equals square root of 24. And as always, we want to write that in simplified radical form. So a would be equal to 2 square root 6. So those are the three power theorems that we're going to be working with. Let's move to our first example. This is an example of a tangent secant. So we're dealing with tangent squared equals outer times whole. So tangent squared equals outer times whole. Our tangent is 8, so we would square that. The outer part of the secant is x times the whole thing. So again, we'd have to do the inner part plus the outer part, the chord plus the external part of the secant, 12 plus x. If we distribute as well as square the 8, you can see we have a quadratic, so we'll want to get everything on one side, set that equal to 0, and see if we can factor. And this one does factor into x plus 16, the quantity x plus 16 times the quantity x minus 4. So we get x equals negative 16, x equals positive 4. Now let's double check, will both of those work? As we can see, as soon as we plug in that negative 16 into x, we would have a negative value for the external part of the secant. Therefore, that would not work. We would only get x equals 4. 
Second example, this is a good one to maybe pause and go ahead and try. It's an example of another tangent secant. So pause it, try it on your own, and then push play again and check to see how you did. Again, this would be tangent squared equals outer times whole. So and again, our whole secant would be 3 plus x. And as we solve, we would find out that x is equivalent to 9. On our third example, this is an example of a secant secant. So outer times whole equals outer times whole. So we would have 2 times 12. The whole secant would be 12. And 4 times 4 plus x. So again, outer times whole equals outer times whole. And as we solve this one, you'll see that we get x equal to 2. The fourth example is also an example of a secant secant. Good idea to pause it, try it on your own, and then check your answer. So we'll have 6 times the whole secant, so outer times whole, which is 28, equals outer times whole, so 8 times the binomial, 8 plus x. And if we go ahead and solve this as well, we'll get 8x equals the 104, and x equals 13. Moving on to a little bit more complicated example. Here we're trying to find xt. As you can see, we have a couple different things going on in this diagram. We have a chord chord. We have chord sy as well as chord wt. And we'll label that intersection point as x. And we have 1 and 3 that we can label on there. We do not know x, y, and we're looking for x, t. We can just call that m. We can label that in our diagram. So we're not actually able to use the chord chord at the moment because we're missing the value of x, y. So if we redraw our circle again, and it, sometimes I find it very helpful to redraw when you have a lot of different chord segments going on in a circle so you can highlight the different power theorems. I did not draw that very well. Let me go ahead and redraw that tangent. So our other power theorem is our tangent secant. Our tangent is tz. Our secant is zs. As you can see, our tangent is going to be 6. And we can label our parts. We do need the outer part, zy. That is 4. But what is our entire secant? Let's take a look at our diagram here. We have 4. We do not know what x, y is. Let's just call that n. And then we know the remaining is 3. So if we take 4 plus n plus 3, we get the entire secant to be 7 plus n. So now we can use our power theorem. Tangent squared equals outer times whole. So we'll get 36 equals the 28 plus 4n. So 8 equals 4n, therefore n is equal to 2. And we can go ahead and plug that back into our diagram. We know n is 2. Let me switch colors here so I can highlight that. n equals 2. And now going back to the circle that we drew in the very top here, our chord chord, we can label x, y as 2 in that and use our part times part equals part times part, our power theorem, to solve for x, t. So we part times part, 3 times 2, equals 1 times m. And m is also equivalent to x, t. So we get that to be 6. The next example we have is actually from the book, okay, from the homework in the book. 
Let's go ahead and read it. The diameter of the Earth is about 8,000 meters. Heavenly Helen in a spaceship 100 meters above the Earth sights earthly Ernest coming over the horizon. Approximately how far apart are Helen and Ernest? Well, let's start at the very beginning with the diameter of the Earth being 8,000 meters. Then we have Helen, Heavenly Helen, and we'll call that H, is 100 meters above the Earth. Go ahead and rewrite that. Just over the horizon, she spots Ernest, we'll call that E, and we want to know what is that distance? How far apart are they? So as you can see here, we have a tangent secant. So we can do x squared tangent squared equals outer times whole. Pardon me, that would be, yes, 8100. And go ahead and multiply. And when we take the square root of that, we would actually get plus or minus 900. However, we could not have a negative distance between Helen and Ernest, so that would just be the positive 900 meters. And last but not least, we have a circle here with a chord AB. AB is 20, and because we know PQ is perpendicular, we know that it is bisected, so AQ and QB are 10. PQ is 2. We are looking for the diameter. Well, we might want to actually draw the diameter in the circle first. So since we know PQ is perpendicular, and if we extend that, that will extend through the center. And as you can tell, we now have a chord-chord power theorem. So we can do part times part, 10 times 10, equals part times part, 2 times x. So when we solve for that, we'll get x to be 50. And is that actually what we're looking for? No, we're looking for the diameter. So x is 50, which is only part of the diameter. So we have to add that to pq. So the diameter would actually equal, equal 52. And this concludes section 10.8 notes.